Howdy folks. So excuse the noise, because I'm outside in my backyard today. Um, this is a bit of an interesting intro to make. Uh, about a year ago, I buried a hard drive in my backyard. And uh, just in a freezer bag, no, no serious protection. And uh, well, it's been over a year, so I'm going to dig it up and take a look at it. Um, I mean, it's buried somewhere around here. I don't actually know exactly where it is, but uh, that's going to be a fun part finding it. I've just got, I've just got a trowel with me. So, um, as to why, um, it's a long story, and I'm going to just kind of gloss over most of the details. But anyway, I was thinking about making sort of like a disaster-proof underground file server. And uh, I wanted to see, I was kind of bored, and I kind of wanted to see what would happen, worst case scenario. So, um, as it turns out, actually, another YouTube, YouTuber by the name of Electron Update actually did this. He actually built a file server out of a piece of PVC drainage pipe. And uh, he's got a video about it. And anyway, I never actually pursued the idea, but I left the drive buried uh, just for shits and giggles. I mean, it's like an 80 gigabyte um, SATA 1 disk. It's really kind of useless. So, I mean, I had nothing to lose. This was just a kind of an interesting experiment. So I'm going to get digging and see if I can find it. So it's actually the next day. Um, I ran out of time last night before it got dark. As you can see, I dug quite a big hole because I uh, seem to have misplaced the photo, which told me where I actually ended up burying the thing. So anyway, after uh, quite a bit of persistent digging and a uh, giant blister on my hand, I've managed to find it. And I haven't uncovered it, just so that I can prove to you it has indeed been buried all this time. But you can see right here, that's, uh, that's one of the corner screws. So I obviously buried it a hell of a lot closer to the wall, uh, this, this uh, retaining wall here, than I thought. Either that or it's moved. Because I, I mean, I could have sworn it was uh, at least a foot this way. But uh, I really don't know. Anyway, all the soil's clay, so it uh, probably didn't move. And I'm just not remembering it right. But anyway, let me uh, let me uncover this, and uh, we'll see what state it's in. Because really, this is going to be a testament to how good no-name freezer bags are first. Um, and that'll be basically, you know, is there water in the drive? And if there isn't water in the drive, then it'll be interesting to see how it's dealt with all of the, uh, the heat and the cold. Because, of course, in Canada, we do get all four seasons. We don't live in igloos. It was like 40 degrees a few days ago here, so... Uh, that will be also interesting. It was not buried below the frost line, so that was uh, another thing I did intentionally just sort of give it the, the worst, I guess. So let me just get this out of here and we can take a look at it. So here it is. So I have yet to take a look at this. So this is basically how I packaged it. Worst possible packaging. And uh, the idea, of course, was, you know, if I was to do that whole backup server thing, it would be in something very, very watertight. And uh, this is, of course, not very watertight, so this was designed to be sort of a worst-case scenario. Uh, would a drive survive, uh, like a seal breaking or something? Um, so I can see already that there's some moisture in the bag. Or no, actually, that might, um, that might be on the outside of the bag, actually. Um, the circuit board does not look corroded to hell, like I was expecting to see. Um, I, this is actually a lot better than I would have thought, to be totally honest. Um, I was I was expecting the bag to have failed. So you can see I, I've marked on this drive. It's it's a five-year-old drive. It's got some bad sectors already. It was not worth using. Uh, like I said, 80 gigabytes out of one, uh, not much use. So burying this was uh, pretty much just the cost of the bag. So not a big deal. So anyway, let me take this inside, get it out of the bag, and uh, we'll take a look at it. And uh, I'm totally okay with plugging this thing in because uh, I want to see if, uh, if the drive still works. It, I mean, it probably does, um, looking at this, unless uh, moisture has gotten in or the cold has destroyed some of the mechanics. Um, it, it actually looks a lot better than I was expecting. Okay, so here we are in my bathroom. I haven't opened the bag yet. I just wanted to do that in a sink just so that I could keep the mud down. So I thought I would uh, show you what it looks like try and keep the dirt out as much as possible. So I think this bag did an excellent job, and it's not even a name brand bag, by the way. It's a, it's just Glide brand, some sort of off-brand thing. So I can see that there is some, what appears like corrosion on the aluminum body of the drive. The bag definitely is sticking to the drive. Okay, so, let me get this 
in the frame here. So you can see that there's definitely some corrosion on the drive, uh, which wasn't terribly evident out in the sun, but in the, the lower lighting here, you can definitely see it. Um, there is a bit of mud and what looks like a bit of moisture has gotten on that label. You can kind of see it in the light there. And it definitely has got that kind of, I was wet for a while kind of uh, feeling on, uh, to it. But um, I mean, I'm still going to power it up, might as well. But uh, it doesn't, I mean, even though the electronics are probably fine, uh, the mechanics could look just like this and that would not be good. So let me, uh, I'm going to probably brush this off so I don't get it stuck in my drive caddy and I'm going to, uh, I guess, just power it up. So yeah, let me go clean this up and uh, wash my hands and we will uh, fire it up for the first time in uh, a year. So I've finished uh, wiping it off. It really didn't do much. I mean, it is corrosion. So uh, wiping it off with a rag isn't going to do much. I've just got my uh, little Vantec uh, USB uh, 3.0 drive uh, dock here. So I'm just going to put this in here. Yep, that did go all the way down. Okay, so I've just got uh, less plus F running on the current log so we can see uh, what happens when this comes up as well as I just put palimpsest up as well uh, in the event that this actually works. So uh, here goes. Okay, so we can see that the disk has come up and it's asking for a passphrase because it is an encrypted volume. Of course, I wouldn't bury my data unencrypted. Um, it makes some pretty loud kind of horrible noises, but um, I'm going to see if I can remember the password for this disk and uh, see if I can actually get some data off of it. So I finally remembered the password to it. And uh, as you can see, it has, uh, I've called the partition Lifeboat. Uh, this is a ext4 partition, so it's not ZFS or anything like that. Um, so if there is data corruption, we're not going to be able to do anything about it. So um, I want to uh, mount this. The drive is very slow, so it may be having read errors every once in a while which would not surprise me, but it does seem to be succeeding in pretty much everything. So let me, uh, it's been mounted. Again, you can see it's very slow. And it makes horrible noises. I've moved the mic so you probably can't hear the drive anymore. But it it has loaded. Now, of course, I've encrypted the data within the encrypted volume, so um, there's no... I, I'm going to probably open a couple of these, but of course, this is all personal data, so I'm not going to be showing that to you. But um, yeah, let me check the smart statistics on this. Okay, so looking at the smart statistics, um, this is all the drive data, if you uh, care. So this the statistics table, um, it doesn't look horrible. I mean, nothing has failed, nothing is really bad. Um, now we do have some errors here. Now, I'm not sure when these occurred. Let me just see, power and lifetime. The last one is, I believe, at the bottom. 42473. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, so no. Um, these errors are from before now. So it doesn't appear to have actually uh, been having errors, so at least that it's dumping into smart. It may be having internal errors, but it's uh, not reporting them. But the disk uh, appears to be fully functional, so let me try to copy something off of here. 
um, something that's very easy to verify, something that's very small. It's the smallest file on here. Let me move the mic so you can hear this. It's not making those horrible noises anymore. And I know that uh, 13 megabytes a second is kind of pathetic for a hard drive, but given when this disk was manufactured, it's 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 still worse than what it should be, but it's it's not uh, it's not that bad. It's not like this drive was ever designed to do you know 200 plus megabytes a second like modern disks. That's just not the case. So the data copied successfully, and I verified the data, and it's actually correct. Um, I don't have any checksums to verify it beyond this. Um, I wasn't expecting it to get this far, so I never bothered to generate any uh, like MD5 sums or anything like that. But uh, it, I mean, it appears to be fine, uh, which is quite surprising. I was really not expecting this. So let me try and power cycle it and uh, see if you. Uh, I've moved the microphone closer, so maybe you can hear the uh, the way this disc powers now. So let's power it up. So it appears to be doing a very modified click of death. So let me uh, let me power cycle the disk again. So I think I can conclude that the disk is very, very unhappy, but data recovery is possible. Um, if I probably let the drive cool down, it might start up again. Um, but uh, it's not it's not terribly hot. Um, it's it's barely warmer than than ambient. So um, yeah, I could try, you know, chilling the drive, maybe warming it up a bit. Um, it could be something just as simple as that that might get it to kick over and actually start, but uh, it's just getting reset by the uh, USB uh, controller, so. So that's uh, pretty much all there is to it for this video, I think. Um, the drive does appear to work, but only under certain circumstances. It's uh, very unhappy. So um, would I consider this viable? No. Um, but of course, if you did it properly, like you used proper PVC pipe or whatever, um, it would, uh, you know, and you, you were really able to keep the water out. Um, it's potentially a viable method of storing data um, for, you know, the ultimate disaster. Um, and I've all, all this is pretty much proven is that this, these drives are actually quite a bit more robust than I, I expected. And also those uh, no-name brand freezer bags are also uh, far more robust than I expected. Uh, obviously, some water did get in, but I mean, we had quite heavy rains. We had. Uh, like almost to the level of flooding type of rains at, at one point last year. Um, of course, full Canadian winter, so you know, it goes down to minus 30, minus 40, and then you've got the Canadian summer, which is like plus 30, plus 40. So um, it's survived a lot and uh, all, you know, all underground. So 
uh, I'm I'm happy with this. I'm willing to do another video on this if uh, people want to know things about it. Um, if they have any tests they want me to run, any procedures they want me to do on it, uh, they want me to take it apart, any of those kinds of things, uh, leave it in the comments and uh, I'll get around to it uh, hopefully within the next couple weeks. But uh, yeah, so I was very surprised at this and uh, yeah, that's all I can say. Um, so yeah, hopefully this was interesting and uh, thanks for watching.